we are working on completing a junk journal start to finish fabric covered in this video we are going to get the inside cover decorated the spine covered etc in the next 13 to 15 minutes my name is peg my channel two old crows mixed media please hit that subscribe button join me in this process the notification bell will let you know when the next video is uploaded so the first thing I want to do is clear off my catch paper that I've been working on. I always lay it down newsprint, so I'm just going to fold that up, put a fresh sheet here. The reason I showed this is I stuck it in that file folder that we're working with because those colors may have some benefit when we're working here. So we have a 6 inch by 9 inch journal. I'm going to cut a 5 inch by or a five and a half inch by eight and a half inch or a five inch by eight inch whichever looks better to you to lay inside my inside front and my inside back i'm choosing to use black there's a lot of black definition on those butterflies and i am just going to place those on the inside front and inside back but before i do that i would like to emboss some butterflies on it so I'm just pulled out the Versamark butterfly stamp and I will make those butterflies look like they're flying up that page. And once I laid that embossing powder down on that wet ink, I'm using a dry brush to wipe away any drops that, that shouldn't be there. And I hit that one with my finger, so I smudged it. So I'm just going to remove it and pull the heat tool out and activate that embossing powder. And now I want to add a second color. This is the white, and I'm adding a green, a light green embossing powder to kind of coordinate with, with the fabric that we've chosen for this book cover. Now, when you're doing these inside front and inside back, if you choose to cover it like I have, it, it, you don't have to do what I'm doing. You can use scrapbooking paper. You can watercolor something. You can paint whatever you choose to do. But I always like to do something on my inside front and my inside back cover that makes it stand out a little bit. I am just flying butterflies across the page and I want it to appear from front to back like there's some congruity there or continuity. And where I smudged again with my finger, I just took that embossing pen and tightened that up a bit. I used two different butterfly stamps, so they're slightly different and see how this kind of looks going across the front and the back and we'll just take some um, glue. I used fabric fusion because I'm going to fabric as well and glue that down and now I'm just tightening up around the outside edges with my glitter glue to make sure that everything is firmly adhered and there's no loose pieces on this cover. And we'll allow that glue to dry and we'll start thinking about what else we can do. I decided to put a couple of little pockets here, narrow pockets for tiny little tags. So I'm just going to give them a thumbprint or a thumb hole there on each. And because they're black, you can't, I'm sorry, you can't really see them. The black on black is, is uh, not too defined, and there isn't really anything I can do to define it unless I'd come back in with a moonlight white, which I, I really don't want to do. So I have this little butterfly stamp or butterfly um, punch, and I've punched out some butterflies to fly up this pocket. Now, if you have a different color, You'll want to ink around it and give it some definition. But since I'm utilizing black, I am not going to do that.
and I'm looking for that other little butterfly. So here we go with that. Get him punched out again because I appear to have lost my bigger butterfly. So we'll just glue him or her. I'm not sure how to define my butterfly. And there, we have a little bit of decoration on those pockets. Just gluing the three sides and putting those pockets one on top of the other. So we have a two pocket little area here. And now that we have the now that we have those two little pockets created, let's take a minute and create a little tag to stick down inside them. So I've pulled out that cardstock that we had utilized when we were gel pressing and put in our file folder to save to use later. And I'm just cutting a thin strip and trimming off the edges to make that tag-like top appearance. You can see I'm using that uh, hotel key card that I've just cut a diagonal on that card and I'm using that as my template. Punched a hole in it and I'm rounding the bottom edges. Just checking to make sure that they will fit and they will. So now I will pull out some coffee stain paper and a piece of graph paper, glue those down and create the journaling space on the back of them with those two items. I'll let that glue sit and dry for a bit and then cut around the outside edge. And this is kind of the purpose of creating additional gel press images when you're creating your signature covers is it provides us with the same look feel that continuity within the journal in some of our journaling cards and some of our pieces of ephemera vintage photo inking around the outside edge and just re-punching that hole to go through the piece that we laid on the back. Probably could have waited to punch that hole then, but it's easy to punch it through the same. Now I had those little butterflies left over, so I just glued those on. I want to work on the spine now, and I want it to be cheesecloth, but covering this black duct tape with the cheesecloth is not going to give us that opacity that we're looking for. So I'm laying down this lace first and I used a fabric fusion glue and just gluing it down. And now I'm going to lay the cheesecloth on top of that. So now you have the veil or the cheesecloth showing that lace through which I think looks good. So it gives us the, the kind of grungy effect on the cheesecloth, but you have that lace showing through instead of the black duct tape. And I'm just cutting a, a few extra, extra strips of that cheesecloth to tie onto the tags we just created a, a moment ago. And I'll tuck those tags down into that pocket. We have the cheesecloth to glue down. And we'll just glue that down with, uh, I'm just going to glue it down with some glitter glue. I'm going to lay that glitter glue down, use my craft stick to avoid getting glue all over my fingers and just kind of push that down so I know that everything is adhered. And now I want to create a little different application on the back. I'm just going to put a corner tuck there 
and I want to strengthen up this music paper with a little bit of that cardstock. So I'm going to cut the music paper and the cardstock together on a diagonal to lay on the corner of the outside back cover. And I'm just trying to get it the right size. I see that I've cut it a little too wide. So I am just going from corner to corner with my paper cutter until I get it to the size that I want. Once I have it there, I'm going to round off those corners and put a little thumb hole section there, inking around the copy, copy the music paper, and we'll adhere that music paper to the black cardstock for strength. Rounding the corners. And gluing down on the three sides. So now we have that nice little tuck spot here on the back. We have the two little pockets on the front. And now that the glue has dried on the spine, I want to go along the edge and just spray that cheesecloth and get that trimmed up so that is a very neat appearance on the inside of the book. And you can just simply pull those threads on the cheesecloth, vertical threads and horizontal threads. I have it glued down so I'm just pulling the horizontal threads to leave the vertical threads as a fray. Or maybe it's vice versa. Pulling the vertical threads to leave the horizontal is afraid. It depends on how you have the book twisted, right? So <clears throat> now that we have the spine covered up, I want to just quickly make a little pocket or a little um, yeah, pocket folder to put down inside that tuck spot on that outside back. So I want to slow this down just a little bit to show you what I'm doing. So I'm just folding this page out of the Edith Holden book in half, in a vertical in half. And now I am going to just turn the corners down of one side. And I'm struggling here to, there's a little fold in this page. So I'm struggling a little bit trying to make sure that I get that even and that the center is clearly defined. So I'm just marking a little pencil dot there. And I'm going to hold my finger down to not try to force that crease and just fold both sides near it instead of folding the two sides to the center, if that is making sense. But I think you'll see from what I'm doing. So now you can kind of see how that folded. And I'm just folding it in half once again, kind of securing that fold with the bone folder. And then folding or securing those creases with the bone folder on the fold downs. And there you have two little tuck spots in a little book format. So now I want to take a second piece of that Edith Holden book and put it over the back side across from or behind those folds, behind this tuck spot, and create an additional tuck spot on the other side. So I've just cut a strip and I will glue that down on three sides to create the pocket. And I'm just giving this entire piece of paper or this book page just a tiny bit of distress. It is an age book, so it's already showing the yellowing and those signs, but just, just a little definition created by the vintage photo. And now that I have that done, I'll place the glue on three sides of this strip and adhere it to the back. And now I have two additional pockets that we just created. Again, the bone folder just to secure that crease, making sure that's in place. And now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew around 
the outside edges and up through the center. So now we have a pocket on each side and when you open that up you have the two pockets on the inside and we'll just tuck that down inside that tuck spot here. And that completes your inside front cover. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you will join me for the rest of the book. We will be creating some ephemera. We will be binding those pages into the book in the next video. And then we will start with page layout, creating ephemera for the book. And we're going to complete it. So thanks for being here. Bye for now.